Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the question, and uh, thank you for the kind invitation. Uh, always good to be back in Istanbul and see uh, so many friends, and especially in this conference where basically some of the best brains in the region are uh, around here. Um, regarding the question, I don't know if, the, if everybody can hear me. With, yeah, everybody we're good? Can hear you. Okay. Um, so basically, there are five elements to, to this question. One is. Uh, uh, the sub-level uh, the, or the levels of, uh, of ideology. So you had the, the 50s and the 60s, you had the, so the supranationalist uh, one, the ones who would see that the state, the nation state is not uh, the unit, the unit should be larger than that. So uh, pan-Arabism and pan-Islamism in particular, two forms of religious-based uh, uh, religious ideologies and ethnic-based uh, nationalist ideologies. Um, you also had the, the, after that, the state level ideologies. So you have all, each of these sets of ideologies focused pri primarily on the state and becoming more and more nationalist and less concerned with uh, transnationalism. Uh, and then also within the state, you have all of these aforementioned ideologies, Islamist, leftist, liberal, uh, uh, conservative, operating at a sub-state level, uh, particular regions, uh, um, uh, more or less, uh, mobilizing uh, pre-state um, uh, entities, tribe, uh, sect, uh, ethnicity, and so on. Uh, but also, you among all these ideologies, you have some common features that uh, affects par primarily the stances on uh, democracy and stances on uh, political violence, if you wish. Uh, all of them, um, when it comes to uh, uh, the, 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 the narratives that they produce, uh, you know, they select particular uh, episodes of history that bolsters the, the worldview. They are uh, very selective on what are the political ills of the environment that should be addressed and targeted and therefore um, um, uh, provide solutions uh, w with respect to these ills. Uh, they are uh, very selective as well on uh, what kind of instruments that should be used to target these ills. So the instrumentalism here is, is, uh, is very high. Um, there is a tendency to overemphasize, to glorify either the figures coming out of this ideology or the, um, the, 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 the literature and the, the, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the intellectual heritage of, of this ideology. Um, so there is a socio-psychological component that each of these ideologies use. Uh, and of course, if you, if you uh, put religion as your reference or ethnic nationalism as your reference, so there, there will be a lot of use uh, of, of these uh, two types of literatures. Um, one issue that uh, also a common feature that on all, in all these sets of ideologies, uh, the, the organizations that operate um, um, within uh, or on behalf of these ideologies, um, the, uh, the, the its political behavior, the decision-making process uh, is not bound to the uh, to the values. So the, the level of pragmatism here is uh, is quite high, and you would find all of the red lines in these ideologies are in times of crisis can be violated. You know, including, for example, collaborating with a foreign force or supporting an invasion or or even supporting a coup at um, at one point or another. Uh, most of these, in times of crises, there's a Turkish exceptionalism, I'll talk about it, but in times of crises, usually these red lines get uh, sacrificed. Um, one other, or, or two things, also a common feature, is um, when it comes to collective action, um, the ideology sometimes uh, is the glue. So you... Uh, you facilitate internal collective actions among a group of leftists or a group of liberals. And there was one famous case of a liberal political prisoner uh, in, uh, in one of the Middle Eastern countries um, who was not subjected to the level of uh, repression that other political groups were subjected to, but the whole world rallied. And one uh, journalist asked him why you, know, you were subjected to much less uh, levels of repression. And his... Uh, answer was we liberals uh, act as a tribe. So one of the tribe members was subjected to this level of repression. So therefore, the, the, the tribe mobilized. So internal collective action uh, happens, but trans ideology collective action does not happen. So it hinders um, trans ideological uh, collective action with, of course, a few exceptions that happened during the Arab uprising, especially in uh, Tahrir Square in Egypt and um, um, uh, elsewhere in, in, in um, 
in several Arab uprising uh, countries. Uh, one common failure among all these sets of ideologies as well and the organizations and political parties that they produce is that there is a failure to translate the slogans into uh, executive policies. And it was very clear, I guess, in in case of the uh, Arab uprising during transition periods, you had the, the big slogans, whether they are ethnic flavored, nationalist flavored, religious flavored, uh, but there is a common failure to translate these into um, successful executive policies. Uh, on the relation with democracy, there is no, there are, there are two or three common features. One of them is there is no consensus on should we use political violence or not among many uh, of these sets of ideology. Like, the, the, is political violence a legitimate tool or not? Uh, and two, uh, the, there is no consensus among these sets of ideologies, intra and inter, so intra within one camp or inter, uh, on is there a non-violent conflict resolution mechanism that we can use um, to, to deal with the differences uh, or to settle the scores uh, or not. Uh, also, there is uh, no consensus on the element of constitutional liberalism with regards to the other. So again, a famous uh, example with, for, from Egypt, where one uh, political party that who belongs to uh, an Islamist political party uh, raised the religious, the, the Jewish question in Egypt, you know, the, the Egyptian Jews who left the country uh, at one point and raised it uh, in the media. Um, and uh, you would think the fire would come from his camp, from, from the, the, you know, the Islamist camp, but more, most of the fire came from, the, came from non-Islamist camp, um, not about the rights of wrong of people who were um, at one point uh, uh, excluded and had to leave the country for, um, for, for, for a different crisis outside of the country. Um, so not, it was seen not as an attempt to right a wrong, uh, but it was an attempt to um, uh, to win some political points against the others, so they had to attack it. Uh, so then, the, the, when it comes to the nonviolent uh, conflict uh, resolution, or, or when it comes to the relationship with the constitutional liberalism with the minorities, with uh, there is no consensus among uh, these sets of ideologies again in the in the MENA region. Uh, finally, uh, the post-ideological, um, uh, uh, when you have an, uh, uh, groups of activists that want to move away from ideology and make a, a post-ideological uh, collective action, uh, they face some severe challenges as well. And uh, talking a bit from a personal experience, I guess I was, I usually try to stay, to analyze politics while not involving it, so staying away and, and watching what's happening and trying to give recommendation based on that. So I made one exception and uh, I guess I, I'm not sure if I regret it or not, but uh, I made one exception after the Arab uprising and got a bit involved directly. Uh, and there was a group of activists who were former friends mainly and acquaintances who were trying to do a, a post-ideological um, um, entity, so ranged from the uh, revolutionary uh, Democrats from the uh, socialist uh, revolutionaries, sorry, uh, all the way to Salafis, you know, in, in, in one entity. Uh, the problem with that is that um, uh, in an environment where the uh, revolutionary rhetoric is very high, uh, the technocrats, the gradualists, the reformists are not a very good mobilizing force. They are uh, very um, uh, uh, very unappealing, uh, you know, not, not as exciting as uh, the others. So they usually lose in that uh, sense. So you would have problems in terms of rallying. You don't belong to a tribe, an ideological tribe, so rallying will be a problem. Uh, you have mobilization problems, uh, and you have uh, problems with regards to the environment. So because what you're saying is based on data and not ideology, so basically, your, your aims are very, are very low. So you're giving realistic estimates of what can be done. And these realistic e e e estimates in an environment of uh, uh, you know, populism at one end or radical uh, revolutionary change on the other uh, is not very appealing. Especially when you look at an environment where the, the legacy of poor education, the legacy of uh, b um, uh, you know, failure of tra transition periods, developments, uh, is very uh, low as well. So also the, the trans ideological, post ideological groups would face some uh, severe challenges in, in, in these environments. Uh, I think I overstepped my time, so I'm going to yeah, stop absolutely. here, but we can talk a little bit about the Turkish exceptionalism <laughs> in the uh, question and answer period. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mark.